Okay, Spivey, you thought you got rid of me by this point, huh? <laughs> I haven't posted very much. I've been uh, reading a lot of webtoons, and so today we're going to talk about webtoons. I'm going to do a webtoon review for you. If you are a fan of manga, these will fulfill those manga needs, but also like be on your phone so you can read them at work, which is what I've been doing, so don't tell my boss. A combination of my interests started, it started before that, but really like last year. Hybe, the parent company that like holds BTS, released a lot of webtoons, okay, based on their big groups. Really great concept. Now this isn't the first time that this has happened. BTS released a webcomic before Hybe existed, back when they were under, uh, when Big Hit was the whole company. And now Big Hit is just a subsidiary. Now, the original comic was Save Me. And so Save Me deals with the alternate universe storyline that runs through all of their music videos. If you ever watched BTS's music videos and you were like, why are there like a lot of reoccurring themes? Like, why are there a lot of members who who seem to be uh, connected to different elements? There's There's certain things that keep on happening. Save Me explains all of that. Save Me is a very, very dark webcomic. And if you only know BTS from like Butter and Dynamite, you might be like, what are you talking about? But a lot of their earlier stuff is pretty dark. So the entire alternate universe storyline begins with the song, I Need You. And I Need You then is kind of almost a trailer for the webcomic, Save Me. It introduces you to the series and then Save Me explains what's going on um, before the rest of the events kind of occur. And the storyline is not totally over, but Save Me is sort of the, the pocket of information you need almost to understand what's going on in a lot of their music videos. Um, but it deals with a lot of really dark topics. It deals with suicide. It deals with murder, it deals with uh, addiction, it deals with poverty, it deals with being at your lowest, most hopeless point and not being able to overcome that. And it also deals with a type of purgatory that I find at least very sad. This is something that was in Doctor Who where you get stuck in a time loop and you have to relive horrible things over and over again. And so Save Me, 10 out of 10 would recommend, however, it's so dark, you guys. Like, you you see the suicides being committed over and over again, having to relive that. It's not something I'd recommend if you're kind of, you know, sensitive to that kind of material. However, if you are at all fascinated, I got into this because I was fascinated, okay? I just kept watching the music videos and being like, why is Suga always associated with fire? Why is Jimin always associated with water? Like, why are these things happening over and over again? Like, what is this overarching plot line? And then I started looking into like fan theories and they're like, no, no, you gotta go to the comic. So I went to the comic. That was so successful for Hive. They enjoy having an alternate universe storyline. So they're like, we're gonna do that with all our baby groups. Uh, so starting, I think it was last year, they started putting together all of these other webcomics, hopefully paying bank to these webcomic artists and storytellers. But it seems like they allowed the, the idols to create kind of their own characters and backstories for them and then spun a story off of it. So BTS got to create a new one and that is Chaco. And that's the first one I'm gonna be talking about. We'll get the BTS ones out of the way and then I'll talk about the other groups. Chaco is this fascinating, and very violent story. So basically, tiger demons, essentially, have been able to come over into our world and they want to destroy humans. Humans are the descendants of a tribe that really, like, screwed them over in the past. So they want to kill all humans. So in response to this, uh, humanity essentially has created a bunch of, like, hunting teams to try and track down these, these tiger demons to stop them. Uh, and so BTS characters have all come from different backgrounds. They've all kind of been flung into this universe in different ways. And we get to see like why each of them is now like thrown into this world of being a tiger hunter, a bomb hunter, B-E-O-M, bomb, are these like tiger demons. And it is so violent, you guys. It has that like uh, Shonen Jump kind of style comic. Uh, very like, for my friends, I shall save the world, like big guns, heads on the floor, that kind of thing. It's very, very, very violent. There's plenty of torture, plenty of bloodshed, but it's kind of cool. It's really long. I caught all the way up on it. The backstories are pretty interesting, uh, very tragic. BTS really like to like spin a tragic story. They really like to get deep into like what makes people break. 
And they did a lot of that with this one too. So it is very dark. And if you are not a fan of like really violent comics and manga, then it's probably not for you. But if you like that kind of thing, it's phenomenal, you guys. Like the story, it's ongoing. It's been going for about a year now. I think they, they, the, the, the style of these webtoons, and it's just like the webtoons app that I'm reading these on, by the way. The style of them is that they, they post new episodes on Fridays, I believe. And you can obviously pay the app to like get the comics early, but a whole bunch of them are out for free right now. So I just read like 37 chapters. It was phenomenal. I loved it so, so much. I recommend it definitely, but again, so fun. But also really fascinating. Okay, so the first Save Me had been like part of the storyline. And so all of them are like their own names. But then the, the you know, not them as idols, but like a different life for them. A totally alternate universe, BTS. This one has like the likenesses of BTS and some of the personality traits. But otherwise, it's fully different characters. Like if you don't know anything about BTS, you can definitely read Chaco if you are interested in some like kind of fantasy sci-fi-esque or really bloody action story, you can definitely get into this. You don't need to know a thing about the group. It is still fully accessible. So the next one, the baby group under BTS. I always call them the baby group and I know they're not, they're not babies anymore, but they did come when they were children. And so like the group under them is Tomorrow by Together, which is a group of five boys who were definitely chosen as like, who are the most beautiful, tall, good dancers we can possibly find in Korea. That's who they snatched up. That's who that group is made up of. So their story is called The Star Seekers. Um, I did not finish. There's two stories I didn't finish because Chaco's really long, you guys. So The Star Seekers and then the next one I'll talk about. I didn't quite finish them. I got at least 10 chapters in so I'd be able to talk about them fully. But so Star Seekers also like Save Me was loosely based around their disc discography. I don't know why I couldn't say that right away. So in their music videos, there's always this kind of theme of magic. There's They've had different like overarching themes for albums, but they've had like a big overarching one as well. And so this delves into that. In this universe, idols who are really successful have magical powers. And if you don't have magical powers, you're automatically like the lesser idols. And so they're the lesser idols. They don't have magical powers. They're not doing that well. Their company is basically like y'all are a burden. But except that they do have magical powers and they find out about them. They are able to awaken their powers. It turns out their powers are stronger than anybody else's. And so then they're learning how to use them both as idols and also kind of to save uh, multiple universes. They're going to be skipping through. I've only just kind of barely touched on that part by episode 10. But... For me, it wasn't as compelling a storyline, but I think it's gonna get more interesting later on. Very like shoujo-esque art style, and it seems very cute. For me, it wasn't the one that I was the most drawn to, just cause I'm not as into that kind of like um, chosen one kind of storylines as much, but it was still really good. Um, I'd recommend the <coughs> Star Seekers is mostly for their fans, I would say, very much targeted at the MOAs is their name, very much targeted at their fans, but also accessible if you like that kind of magical fantasy chosen one kind of manga, you'd probably really enjoy Star Seekers as well. Uh, there's definitely like learning how to cast magic. Magic system seems really interesting. That was Star Seekers. And I'm sure if I get further in, I'll like leave comments down below like or something and let you know what I've thought about it as I've gotten further in. But I've read 10 chapters so far and those are my thoughts. So the next one I've read 10 chapters of, just because, again, they're very long, is the one that is for the group N-Hypen, which is kind of the third. They're not under the exact same, they're not under Big Hit label, but they were the first group formed by the Hybe company, like, once it was formed as, like, a subsidiary group on its own. So N-Hypen is a group of seven members, and their webcomic is awesome, you guys. <laughs> it's awesome if what you were looking for is that kind of classic shoujo harem manga that takes place at a vampire academy. It's a vampire academy harem, okay? All of, that's all you need to know about it. That's it. You don't need anything else. There's a, a character who easily could be a self-insert character, the female lead, and then all of the boys you know, instantly falling in love with her. It's that kind of, it's that kind of manga, and if that's where your tastes lie, 
go and love it. It's beautifully drawn. It has interesting storylines. Their characters are pretty well put together. It's kind of hilarious because they're immediately like, there's a backstory to it and all of that. But she goes to this academy and she's like, I heard this academy was perfect because there's no vampires here. And they're like, cool. This is a night school. We start classes at 9 p.m. and we end at 2 a.m. That's kind of weird, but you'll get used to it. We definitely have no vampires. And she's like, that sounds so legit. Seems like no vampires. Then she meets like seven vampires and she's like, these guys are real hot, but definitely no vampires at this school. I would never suspect these guys who then are showing me they all have magical powers of different kinds. They couldn't possibly be vampires. You, it's that kind of story. It's hilarious. It's fun. If you really like that kind of like fun, almost slice of life, academy style, shoujo anime, and you love vampires, this is it, you guys. This is your comic for you. It's called Dark Moon, The Blood Altar. It's a ton of fun. So I'm gonna be, I'm probably gonna finish that one first and then go back to Star Seekers, honestly. I'm about 10 chapters in. We've introduced a werewolf faction. It's amazing. It's all of those things. It, what else could you ask for? It's fun, it's fun. Then the last one I read is Les Seraphim is the group. And I love them, you guys. They're phenomenal dancers. They're a lot of fun. They're the like newer girl group. I'll be, New Jeans is the newest girl group. We won't even get into that. That's a whole other thing. They're doing something with their music videos that is fascinating. New Jeans is. I, I might even talk about that at the end, but we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait because the Seraphim's comic is kind of fascinating. So there haven't been that many. The group hasn't even been out. The group hasn't been together for a year. They got announced in, what was it, May last year? So their webcomic has only been out for a little while. There are about 13 chapters, I think. Um, so I read all of those. Their storyline is that, and we haven't even actually met all the members. So they had a member leave. And it came to my attention at some point, that member who left, is probably one of the characters currently in the story. So there's five girls in the group. There's five girls in the story. And I found out one of the girls in the group is a character we haven't met yet up to the point that I've read to. She's not the character I thought she was. And then it made me kind of be like, hmm, interesting. So what's going to happen with that character who isn't a member of La Seraphim? So that's fascinating, right? But so the idea is these girls, most of them live within this bubble world this very sterile, very science-based, like, little ecosystem that sits in the world. And they've always lived in here. It's very academic-based. It's, it's a very sterile little environment. Outside of the world is kind of this, like, very fantasy-esque wild world going on. And they end up transported out of there through magic. <laughs> always through magic, right? The, the challenge for them, then, the adventure they need to go on is that this blue firefly dust like pollen in the air has been making people kind of crazy like crazy for magic like addicted and doing terrible horrific things because of it like people are so hungry for this they want to find the source and try and break a curse that is legend to have happened that has caused all of this so they end up kind of meeting people along the way facing some obstacles along the way but all in a quest to kind of adventure and find out what happened and to fix it and it's been really cool so far. I enjoy it very much. I'm uh, having fun with it. I hope it definitely carries on. I will continue reading it. There's not much else to say about it other than that. Those are the Hybe webtoons. There's one more, but I think it's the spinoff for, there's like a second to Dark Moon. There's like a second part. I haven't read the second part, okay? I only have been reading The Blood Altar and I'm only 10 chapters in, but it's great. So if you've been looking for some comics or some manga to enjoy, I definitely recommend looking into Hybe's back log of webtoons. They hired some exceptional artists. They just look like, they look like mangakas have been hired for this. Like some, some very, very talented artists have been hired on to do these web comics and they're long and they're in depth. There's so much storytelling going on and you don't need to know who the group members are because it's not that important, especially for the last three stories. Or actually, Richako and then Dark Moon and Crimson Heart. Crimson Heart is Le Seraphim's story. Crimson Heart then is in a necklace, is the Crimson Heart that they found that has magical abilities. But yeah, you don't need to know any of that. It's just like, it's just great comics. And I was really impressed, I was really surprised. I knew Save Me was really good. One of the things that BTS's company has done really, really well is have like very interesting other forms, other than just like the music and the dancing and all of that that you see as being like what idols do um, and the promotions and all of that. 
other than that, they have a lot of really interesting things that they just like have going on. So you can ex access these groups in totally different ways. But the AU was one of the most fascinating things. Like they've just created an alternate universe of suffering, basically. And then, you know, working through how do we, how do we solve this? Like the whole point of Save Me and the storylines is like things have gotten this bad. How do we fix it? How do we save everyone? How do we deal with everyone's pain? Like where it is at its core? How do we solve that and come back together and be friends again and be together again? Like how do we go back to a time when we were happy? And that that's hard, that that is almost impossible. That saving one person doesn't mean you're gonna save another person. Saving one person one time doesn't mean you'll save another person. This butterfly effect of, of trying to help almost makes things worse and this all this like torture of having to try again and again it's brilliant and now like i will talk about new jeans because you haven't heard about new jeans because you're outside of k-pop i would recommend looking up their video omg uh they actually ditto was the first one where i was just like what is going on like i'm not that into their music is the problem like hype boy was their really big one and i was like it's catchy but i'm not that into it it doesn't have like that interesting of lyrics uh attention didn't have that interesting of lyrics but once they got to ditto the music video you guys is insane it's so brilliant and it's a commentary on like how people interact with idols but then omg i don't know it's so self-aware it's so brilliant i'm it's so, so different and interesting. And it's a little bit, there's a, there's a movie and I rewatched it. Recently. I watched it a long time ago. And then I realized it stars Rain, like the idol Rain, like the one who everyone has always looked up to. It stars him as like the, the, the love interest. And I think that's what it, okay, what is, what's it called? I'm going to look up the name real quick here. Oh, it's title is, okay, oh, if you haven't seen this, I definitely recommend this movie. It's called I Am a Cyborg, but that's okay. Uh, so this girl is in this mental institution and she believes that she's a cyborg. And you kind of go through the steps of her telling you that and what she's seeing in her head and also like what everyone else's kind of delusions are. It's great. It's kind of silly and weird, but it's great. It's so good. So... OMG has that same kind of concept as I'm a cyborg, but it's okay. Like the first thing that happened, I won't, I won't even spoil it. You have to see, you have to see it. Honestly, okay, I'm just going to link, I'm going to link. So there's trailers essentially for each of the comics that I've talked about. I will link them all down below. So you could see if you are at all interested in the concepts or the idols and you want to read the webtoons. Uh, it's just the webtoons app. It's just called webtoons. It just... If you're at all interested, those will all be linked down below. And I will also link OMG because I'm just saying it is so wild. This concept or like this mental institution and like being so self-aware. I don't know. You don't even have to like the song. The music video is fascinating. So all of that is going to be linked in the description down below. Uh, this is what I've been spending my time on. How you been? How you doing? Have you been reading anything interesting? Have you been reading any webtoons? I'm such a big manga fan. This is like fully satisfying my manga cravings. You know, like just getting to kind of like get into all of these like interesting different webtoons. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, let me know if you also read webtoons though and which ones you recommend down below. I'd love to know that. Is anyone else in has anyone else read the Hybe comics and have any thoughts? I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Like you can't spoil anything for me. I'm catching up quicker than you can spoil them. I've been reading these so fast now that I finally was like, I need to catch up on Chaco. And then I did in like a week. I power read. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below what you think. It's lovely talking to you again. It's been a while. I have been very focused on my other channel because K-pop is my life. But I thought this is kind of a crossover material thing. So I thought I'd bring it over here and share what I've been reading with you guys. So I will talk to you again very soon. Good luck to you and good luck to all of us. Bye.